All right, so we're continuing learning how to multiply, and then we'll get to dividing some rational expressions. Today we'll continue with a couple more multiplying. The last one I gave you was uh, the one with some steps on that, right? I gave you the steps as well. And the first thing that we're supposed to do when we're multiplying some rational expressions is we need to factor these things completely out. And the reason why is because we're going to be simplifying using common factors. So we can't do that unless we actually factor it. So let's go ahead and try this on this next example. And we'll see what to do about this. Now I gave you a few steps last time. We're going to follow those pretty much to the letter every time we do a multiplication of rational expressions. That's the best way to do it. So the very first thing we get to do is we look at this thing and we are going to, what was that again? Yeah, we've got to factor completely. Because again, we're going to be looking for common factors eventually. So let's look at this thing together. Can you tell me something up here that you're going to be able to factor? Okay, factor out first before we start simplifying. Oh. <laughs> factor out. So, so okay. So x squared minus 1, we can factor that thing. What's that called, people on the left-hand side of the room? This particular type of expression is? Square. No, it's a term. Different than square. It's square. Square. Yes, we have square something. We have. Difference of square? That's a difference of square. Are you guys awake today? <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> so All right, let's wake it up. Come on. Yeah, that's a difference of squares. You need to be seeing that. It's a difference because it has a subtraction. That's two squares there. We've actually factored that one at least twice in this class already. Uh, we need to be very good at seeing those. So we're going to, how about the 15? Can I factor the 15? No. How about the 5x? Can I factor the 5x? No. no. Those, are, those are there. Those are just single terms. You can't factor single terms. x squared minus 1, though, that is something we can factor. Someone in the middle of the classroom, tell me how I factor x squared minus 1, please. x minus 1, x plus 1. Very good. That's the difference of squares. Got to be, bam, just getting those right all the time. Are you okay, okay on getting x minus 1, x plus 1? Mm -hmm. See where that's coming from? Good, all right. We've covered that a few times in here now. Uh, now, how about anything else up here? What else factors? Great, x squared minus x, what factors out of that? So remember, even though it looks like two terms, like that's not a difference of squares, how am I supposed to factor that? We always start factoring with GCF, that greatest common factor. And when you look at x squared minus x, well, they, they share an x in common, so we're going to factor that out. So we'll factor out an x. What are we left with if we factor out the x? x minus 1. Okay. You all look kind of factoring things like that. Good. So no diamond problems here. That's really not a big deal. Uh, the next thing we do is, after we factor, what am I making you do before we do anything else? Say that louder. Write as one fraction. Yeah, we have to. Because what we're doing here is we're changing, after we factor, we're changing a multiplication problem into a simplification problem. And the only thing that we have to do to show that is I let you, instead of rewrite the whole thing, just extend that line. That's all you got to do. Because as soon as we extend this line, put the multiplication there and there, we now have a simplification instead of a multiplication problem. That's kind of nice. So now we're on to simplifying some. This is the best part. We get to cross stuff out. What can we cross out on this problem? The 5. <laughs> yeah, now we're ready to cross out the yeah, 5. That's right. We couldn't do it before because yeah. notice they're not together yet. We want to factor mm -hmm. first, make sure we have this one fraction, then we can do it. The 5 with the what? 15. 15 becomes a what, everybody? 3. Three. Good. OK, somebody else give me another thing I can cross out. Mm -hmm. Say that louder. Mm -hmm. The x. Let's look at the x. Can I cross out the x? Uh, yeah. They're being multiplied, right? That means it's a factor. So this x and this x are gone. That's great. Right hand side of the room, something else I can simplify. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Those are entire factors. We can simplify those out. We're going to write what's remaining. We've got to be careful not to write anything we've crossed out, but we can't miss anything either. So on our numerator, what's left? Well, that's great. How about the denominator? So all this stuff, when you all simplify it, 
it's just equal to 3 over x plus 1. That's it. That's as far as we can go. You can't simplify anymore because you wouldn't have been able to do it in the previous step right there. How many people feel okay about this particular problem? Good. All right. Let's continue on this stuff. We'll do one more together, then we'll start talking about some division, and you're going to find that division is very, very similar to multiplication. There's just one little extra step. I am going to have you do some of this stuff on your own on this problem. Okay, we are going to do this somewhat together, somewhat on your own. This is a great problem for us to do. This actually covers pretty much every type of factoring we've done in here so far. So if you can do this problem, you should feel pretty good about your factoring, all right? So let's go ahead, and I'm going to do this piece by piece with you. We'll start with the easy parts of this. So right now on your paper, the first thing we, we know we need to do is factor. You guys are all with me on that, right? Mm -hmm. We can't really do anything with this unless we factor it. We can't start simplifying 3 and 9. That, that doesn't work you got to factor first because you have to do this as one fraction and then start simplifying. So what I'd like you to do, start with your problem, factor this one first. Okay, I'll give you about, that's, this is an easy one, let's factor this one, about five seconds to factor that. Okay, so the 4x plus 8, I'm giving you some time. What factors out of 4x plus 8? Good. And you're left with? Now, Japan, if you factored that out and got x plus 2. Did you? Good, okay. Now, let's go, let's go down to, let's see, which one do you want to do next? 14x. This one? Okay, let's factor that one. Now, there was one thing I told you about that one. Let's see if you can see, if you can see it. I told you about this, I think, last, last time or something before that. Factor on your own, see what you can factor out. Okay, so 14x minus 7x squared, you have a couple options here, all right? You have options. Now, one of them is going to be a better option for you. I told you this a while back. I said you're supposed to factor in order to get the term with the largest exponent positive because otherwise you're going to have to factor out a negative anyway. Are you with me on this? So in this problem, really, you shouldn't be looking at factoring out 7x. You should be factoring out negative 7x. How many people saw the negative 7x there? Good for you. If you didn't, now fix, your, fix the, the problem. So we're going to factor out negative 7 and the x. If you do that, factor out negative 7x, what you're going to be left with is negative 2 plus x. Do you see how by factoring out the negative, we changed both signs? Mm -hmm. are, are you clear on that or no? Yes. Are you sure? Okay. I just want to make sure that you know why that's a negative and why that's now a plus. Do you see it? So we're factoring the negative out. Okay, if you distributed it, we'd get exactly that thing back again. Now the next step I'm going to do on this little part is I'm just going to take these and flip them around. It's going to be x minus 2. Now depend if you're okay on that part. Okay, that's going to make things a lot easier to see in the future in the next thing we're going to do. Okay, let's go down to, oh, let's do this one. Let's do the 3x squared minus 5x minus 2. You all should know how to factor that one real well at this point. This is what type of problem? Good. And ladies and gentlemen, on the left-hand side of the room, is this going to be the extra step where we have to factor by grouping or not? Okay, do that now. I'll give you about a minute. You should be pretty good at this stuff right now.
also, guys, try to go through that homework kind of quickly because I have a lot to, I have four assignments to get back to you. If we don't do it now, it's going to get backed up. Everybody, what number goes up top? Okay. What number goes on the bottom? Six. So to add to negative five, you're supposed to multiply to negative six. Yeah, a lot of people try twos and threes here. Twos and threes aren't going to work. Uh, you, you're going to have to multiply to negative six. That means you're going to have one positive, one negative, and they're going to have to add to negative five. Threes and twos won't cut it for you. So you're going to have to have a six and a one somehow. Um, in our case, we're going to have a negative 6 and a positive 1. Negative 6 and positive 1 are the only two numbers you're going to do. Did you find negative 6 positive 1? Good, all right. Now, we can't just put x minus 6 and x plus 1. We could do that if there is no number out front like that. That would be great. But there is a number out front. That means our extra step says we're going to do... Factor by group. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the factor by group. In order to do that, we make four terms out of it. We look at the first two. What factors out of the first two is a 3x. So we factor 3x. We get x minus 2. We look at the second part. There's really nothing that factors out of those two terms. So we factor out a 1. So we're going to do plus because it says plus. We still have the x minus 2 because factoring out 1 doesn't change anything. Have we done the problem right? Yeah, it looks right because we have the same thing in both spots. So we continue on. And that's our new numerator. How many were with it so far? I feel like this. Good. Hey, there's one more part. Let's look at 9x squared minus 1. Factor it. If we factor 9x squared minus 1, we look into this and we see we have how many terms here? How many terms here? Two terms. That means we look for greater than one factor. Of course, there's not one because we have a 1 up there. But this isn't a diamond problem. This can only be really one thing for us. This could be a difference of squares. Because that's a square. We don't have a cube. Or nothing. In this case, this is a difference of squares. Did you see the difference of squares? Mm -hmm. Now, how in the world is it a difference of squares? Well, we can write 9x squared as 3x squared. Do you buy that? That's 9x squared. And then minus, instead of 1, you really could, you could write 1 squared. And so what this is, is exactly the same. Look at this. This is the same as this, basically. It's just instead of x squared, you have 3x squared. Are you with me on that? Different squares. We've had that several times now. You're going you're gonna to be pretty good at this at the end of the semester. So we get to factor this 